Hello. In this video, we will be using Mathematica strictly for mathematical typesetting. So let's take a look. On the screen here, I have Mathematica and I have Word open with a homework assignment from a class. What I want to do is use Mathematica to duplicate some of the problems I have typed out in Word. So let's start with the blank Mathematica screen. You'll notice that my cursor is horizontal. That means it's ready for input. But to help us, let's open up some Mathematica palettes, which you can see on the top of the screen there. So let's click palettes. The ones we want to use are the basic, basic math assistant. So we'll click on that one. And we'll bring that over to Mathematica. And we want to make sure that typesetting is opened. If it's closed, you just click on the inverted arrow to open it up. You'll notice it has some mathematical symbols there. And on the menus, there are more of them. Okay. And let's also open up the palette that is called the Writing Assistant. And you can see that one also. And we'll move that over. And you'll notice it also has typesetting, but it also has things about cells that we'll talk about in a different video. Okay, you'll notice there's some overlap here between these palettes. And another palette I like that's not on the main palette menu, it is under Other, is Basic Math Input. So let's open that one and bring that over to Mathematica. Again, you'll see it has some basic mathematics symbols over here. In fact, let me get rid of the writing assistant now since it's covering up our Microsoft Word. And let's see if we can make do with this. So let's look at the first problem. It's a limit proof. So how can we duplicate this in Mathematica? So for one, let's just start typing. Make sure our cursor is horizontal. So let's duplicate it. Prove that if... Now you'll notice this is in a very basic font, the courier font. That's because we just started typing in Mathematica. You'll notice over here we have a bracket that's called a cell bracket. So if we'd like to turn this into nicer text, let's click on the cell bracket, choose format, style, and we'll turn it into text. As you can see right now it is in input mode. put a space and now I'm at the point when I need some mathematics I need x sub n is greater than or equal to zero so I need a subscript and you'll notice in the typesetting palette there is a subscript icon so let's click that you'll notice that there's a box for the x and a box for the sub n so let's click on that box and put x let's click on that box and put sub n now we are still in the subscript so I'll use the right arrow to move out of the subscript and you'll notice that there is a darker shade around x sub n. That means we are still in mathematics mode. Anything we type will be in the special mathematics font. So now we need the greater than symbol. And that's not in this typesetting palette here. We can check these tabs and see if it's in there and it's in the third tab, greater than or equal to, or you might have noticed it was down here in the basic math input. Either way, so let's click on greater than zero, and you'll notice in what we are copying, we want for all n, but we want for all to be out of the mathematics font, and we are still in Mathematica in the mathematics box, so we will press the right arrow key until the highlight goes away. You'll notice now the highlight around x sub n is greater than zero is gone. Okay, so now we can type normally for all, but now we are at the point where we need mathematics symbols again, n element of n. Okay. Now we would like to get in a mathematics box, and here is the cheat that I use. I just type a superscript or a subscript that opens a mathematics box, and then I just use the backspace key to get rid of the superscript. You'll notice now it's waiting for input and since it is highlighted it will be in mathematics font. So n, you'll notice the n is in italics and that's because we like our mathematics to be italicized when we do variables. Now we need the element symbol 
and again you can see it's on the basic math input palette or you can look around on these tabs until you find it. Oh, and it's also there. So an element of. Now we need the natural number symbol. And we see that right here. Let's put a comma. And now our next input is text again. So we'll use the right arrow key to get out of the text box. And now we want x sub n approaches a. And of course that's going to be mathematics. So we'll go back to our type setting. We want x sub n. So we click on the subscript. Click on the empty box x. Click on the subscript box n. Now we are still in the subscript. You can see the cursor flashing in the subscript. So we'll right arrow to get out of the subscript. Now we want an arrow. So let's see if we can find that. approaches A, and we want A to be in italics. Mathematical symbols are in italics. Okay. Comma. And now we want the word then, so we will get out of mathematics using the right arrow. Then. And now we want mathematics symbols. So we'll go back. Now we want a square root symbol. We should be able to find that fairly easily. There it is. Now we want the square root of x sub n, so we'll click on the input box for the square root. Now we want x sub n. So click on the subscript. Click on the input x sub n. Now we are still in the subscript, so I'll use the right arrow to get out of the subscript. Now you'll notice we are still under the square root, so I'll use the right arrow to get out of the square root. Now we want an arrow for approaches. And we want the square root of a. So let's go back. Square root a. Click to the right to get out of the square root symbol and period. Now that seemed like a lot of work, but remember when you're using the word math symbols, it also takes some getting used to. So we have duplicated problem one on this test. Now you can change the font size. You can make it larger, but this is in 12 point font. We will get to that in a later video. I just wanted to show you the capabilities of using Mathematica to do some mathematical typesetting.